So today I'm going to give a brief presentation of my research background and also the project that I will carry out during these two years, in, the next two years in the, at LBU. So. Oh, okay, so I had a degree in biology and a master in advanced microbiology in, uh, from Spain. So I did my PhD in, in Spain, in A Coruña, and a postdoc at University of Queensland in Australia in collaboration with, with A Coruña as well. So last year I was working for four months here at LV uh, in, a, in the project Biogas Rio. And this year I, I started in June a new position as a postdoc um, in a project funded by the European Union uh, under the, um, the Marie Curie program. So I, you cannot see the what? You can you remove the uh, three dots. Mm. Hide. 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 This one? This one? Okay. Okay, so as brief introduction. So I don't know why it's not working. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So pathogenic bacteria achieve the, a perfect balance between resistance and virulence. So on one hand, bacteria uh, resist and give protection to the bacteria against antibiotic therapies and allow their adaptation into the environment. And on the other hand, virulence uh, will give protection to the bacteria against uh, host defenses and allow the development on the, of the infection. So it's important to know that these two mechanisms are inter interconnected and they are essential for the bacteria to be a successful pathogen. So my research career was focused, so I was interested in understanding how bacteria survive and how bacteria is able to produce this infection. So my PhD was focused uh, on understanding the new virulence factors of a specific pathogen that was a Cinetobacter baumanii. So this is an opportunistic pathogen, which means that only it produces infection in immunocompromised uh, people, person. So the problem with this pathogen is that it has a huge ability of develop multidrug resistant phenotypes because of this uh, genomic plasticity that the, it has. And also is able to produce biofilms in the, um, in the uh, hospital settings. So, well, this is an example of biofilms that produce. So um, I will give a few examples of some results, some projects that I was working uh, during my PhD. So we found a clinical strain that has a huge ability to produce biofilm. So we wanted to understand what was going on with that. So which uh, virulence or which virulence factor could have this bacteria to produce this amount of biofilm. So what we did, we developed a biofilm of this strain. We, and we analyzed the gene expression of these cells comparing with the planktonic cells, with the free cells. So we found a collection of genes that were upregulated and downregulated during the, the biofilm stage. So in this case, because we wanted to focus on, on this ability, so we'll, uh, we analyze our gene collection to look for um, pili, adhesins, or fimbria, which are involved in the first step of the biofilm formation, which is the adherence to the to surfaces. So we found a pili that was uh, strongly upregulated during biofilm, and we do a gene deletion from the, from the bacteria. And we observe, it's kind of a small, but uh, we observed that the bacteria was not able to produce biofilm anymore. Mm -hmm. So, well, you cannot really see that, but this is a biofilm produced by the wild type. And here there is no, almost any bacteria attached in the mutant strain. So in a 
It's another example. So we follow the same approach, but the objective was different. So we wanted to understand how, how Acinetobacter baumani uh, produced infection. So we, we developed a pneumonia infection in mice. We, and we analyzed this, um, this, the collection of genes that were upregulated and downregulated during this pneumonia infection. So again, we have this profile with the genes upregulated and downregulated. And we didn't have, in this case, any, any objective, any target. So we uh, chose around 35 genes that we were expect to be uh, associated with, with virulence. So we did the gene, gene deletion of all of them individually. And we analyzed their virulence, uh, their virulence phenotype. So uh, I think around 75% of the mutants that we constructed has a reduction in the, in the virulence. So I show here just three examples, but you can see how this is the line, uh, the survival of the mice infected with the wild type strain that has in this case around 10% of survival. And when the mice were infected with the, with the mutant strain, it has a 100% survival. So this study, so from this study, we continue, uh, we continue different projects with different targets. So we have a huge amount of uh, data from there. So, and some projects are ongoing uh, from that. So after that, so I moved to Australia and I continue working on this uh, ability to, well, the virulence of, uh, of um, bacteria or the, the virulence determinants that could um, um, explain the dissemination of uh, bacteria. But then I started working as well with resistance, uh, with resistance. So I was uh, mostly interested in understanding the mechanism of resistance to bacteria to specific antibiotics. So here is an example of resistance to nitrofurantoin, which is an antibiotic that is used for untreated um, and complicated urinary tract infections. So we, ha we had, what we did was, um, we grew this bacteria with, this, it was a sensitive strain. So we grew the bacteria in increasing concentrations of the nitrofurantoin, and we observed uh, over the time that the resistant phenotype was increasing, as you can see this here in the graph. So we chose different points in the resistant evolution, and we did DNA sequencing and bioinformatic analysis to, to see uh, which genes uh, had mutations, to see more or less the targets of the of the resistance. So in these three, so these are three replicas of the same experiment. So we observe in the three replicas the same, more or less the same evolution. So we observe first uh, mutations in two nitroreductases, which makes sense because these enzymes will reduce the antibiotic and the antibiotic will become resistant, uh, active, sorry. So, then we will, will we saw a, a, a up regulation of an efflux pump and also mutations in purines. So these two are mechanisms of multidrug resistance that typically for bacteria. So well now uh, I will start with the project that the Marie Curie project. So uh, so within this circular economy approach, so two of the most common resource recovery applications are the use of treated water for irrigation and the use of organic waste as fertilizer. So the problem with these resource recovery applications is they can lead to the dissemination of virulence and antibiotic resistant genes within, this, uh, within all the compartments, human, animal, and environmental. So again, as a reminder, both genes will be essential for pathogen emergence. So we know that um, 
wastewater and solid waste treatment can reduce the concentration of, of uh, antibiotic resistant genes. We also know that resource recovery approaches contribute to ARG's uh, dissemination. But regarding the virulence genes, uh, they have not really been studied. So there is some preliminary uh, data, recent articles that say that wastewater treatment plants could reduce the concentration of these genes in the effluents. But we don't know uh, the role of solid waste treatment on, on BG's fate. We don't know the impact of resource recovery approaches in BG's dissemination. We don't know almost anything, anything about the concurrence, the presence of ARGs and BGs together. And a, a part which is for me very important is we don't know if the dissemination of these genes, BGs and ARGs, into the environment will have a real impact on the bacteria that are present in, in the receiving, yes, in receiving environments. So the project is divided in three main objectives. So the first objective will focus on the wastewater treatment line. And the idea will be to, to study the the fate, the present and the fate of these genes during the wastewater treatment network. So to do so, we will take samples from the whole wastewater treatment line, and we will analyze the whole collection of BGs and ARGs using shotgun metagenomics. What we will expect from here is to, to know which are the most common BGs and ARGs uh, under hotspots within the treatment line, to know uh, the fate of these genes during treatment. And we will know also which are the, uh, could, could be the optimal wastewater treatment approaches uh, leading to mitigation. So the second objective will focus on, on solid, uh, solid waste. So we will, uh, first, we will study the fate of these genes during different types of uh, solid waste treatment, like anaerobic digestion, composting, or some stabilization processes. And later, we will we want to know also which are the fate of these genes after uh, agronomical use of this treated water or, or treated solids. So to do so, again, we will analyze the whole collection of BGs and ARGs that shotgun metagenomics. genomics. Uh, and in the case of the, of the impact of, of solid soil application, we will do a uh, pot trials. Uh, we will get from here the most common, the most effective treatment processes and operational conditions that will lead to this mitigation of these genes and also the fate of these genes after agronomical use. So the last objective, so until here, we will know which, are the, which is the fate of these genes after waste, uh, wastewater and uh, solid waste treatment. So now what we want to know is if, the, if there is a dissemination of these genes, if there, if there is a real impact on the phenotype of bacteria in the environment. So this will be a kind of proof of concept. So we will study the transfer of genes from manure, from manure and sludge into an specific E. coli strain. And we will use a technology that was developed, uh, that was developed by a group in the United States. So which is called the CRISPR Spacer Acquisition System. So it's based on the immune system of bacteria, CRISPR, um, against external DNA. So it has been already used, used for um, recording the gene transfer from, uh, from the gut, from gut microbe. So um, after that, after we have the recording of these genes, we will know if there is a if there is an impact on the phenotype. So we will analyze the virulence and the resistant phenotype of these transplant DNA strains. So we will know from here the most common BGs and ARGs transfer, and also the impact of this transfer on the on the bacteria. 
So we have already started working on the first objective. So during these two uh, two months, uh, I have read a lot about the um, the fate of wastewater treatment in mostly in a in in virulent in antibiotic resistant genes fate because there is almost nothing about BGs. But I don't really have a clear conclusion on that because depending on the article, depending on the review that you read, the data is contradictory. So uh, an option that we could have from here is to do a meta-analysis, take all the data and analyze all together to see if there is any trend of uh, which uh, treatment is better for BGs or ARGs mitigation or dissemination. Or, so this is an option. So regarding the sampling, so what we are going to do uh, new, so most of the, the, the studies that do in full scale, always is now in full scale or pilot scale. So normally they analyze the, the presence of ARGs in the input of the wastewater treatment light and in the output, in the output. but they don't really uh, analyze what is going on in between. So for do that, we will we will do take samples before and after every uh, treatment unit when it's possible, of course, uh, and we will analyze exactly the collection of VGs and the RGs that we have in all these systems. So uh, another part is that uh, most of the studies focus on the wastewater treatment line, but they don't really. Uh, they don't really study the presence of these genes in the sewage sludge, which is important because maybe these genes can be reduced in the water, but they there is not a degradation. There is this, these genes move to the sewage sludge. So we will try to also to take samples from from this part of the solid part, and we will try to analyze uh, this collection of genes as well. So another point is that we will study uh, internal DNA, which means the DNA that is within the intact bacteria. But for us, it will be also interesting to, uh, to study the external DNA, which is the DNA that is in the water or it's in the sludge, but not within the, within the bacteria. Because some of the treatment can induce the lysis of bacteria but then the DNA could be released into the treated water, and then the use of treated water will really will disseminate this uh, free um, free genes. And of course, bacteria in the environment can uptake these these genes. So analyzing all of this, I think we could have a, a good idea about the real the fate of these genes after the treatment. And the last part here is that, well, uh, most of the studies also do a qPCR. So they analyze a specific collection of genes. And we know that depending on the genes, uh, the disseminate, they can disseminate or they can be mitigated after, uh, during the treatment. So, in this case, with the shotgun methagenomics, we have a global idea about what is happening. Um, okay, so we have started uh, with the selection of the wastewater treatment plants. Uh, so we wanted to cover the uh, as much technologies and processes as possible. So we have selected four um, wastewater treatment plants in France. So they have different treatments, so they can have a, a secondary biofiltration, activated sludge, and this one is nature-based nature uh, solutions. Uh, they, we wanted also to analyze different tertiary treatment, such as ozonation or ultraviolet or chlorination. So we, that's the reason why we choose different types of uh, wastewater treatment plants. So we have, okay, so we have until now the agreement of Sophia Antipolis, 
which is in near Nice. So they have they are they have agreed of, on sampling, and we will start sampling in October this year. Um, we have already the agreement for the Reflex Research Platform, which is a pilot of Finra Helium. Uh, about Berniers, uh, we try to contact the the manager, but we are waiting for the for the reply. And uh, also for Narbonne Plus, uh, we will know something next week as well. So. I think if we have these four, these four plants, we can have uh, really nice data. And I also forgot that the, our uh, sampling strategy will be to take samples, 24 hours composing samples uh, when it's possible, because in all, in all the steps will be possible, uh, three weeks in consecutive in two seasons, in spring and in autumn. So we can have a uh, oh, more and well, that's all for now. <laughs>